Warning, this program contains flash photography and graphic images of a crime scene from the outset. On your mark. Set. Oscar Pistorius has been charged with the murder of a woman thought to be his girlfriend at his home in South Africa. Oscar in sporting terms, an icon, is a hero. A disabled person running with able-bodied athletes on the biggest stage in the world, incredible. Oscar is really big in global terms. Superstar Oscar Pistorius! The London Olympics felt like it was almost the Oscar Olympics. He was almost bigger than the gold medal. I read somewhere that he's probably the best known South African after Mandela. I thought that there was a burglar. Before I knew it, I'd fired four shots at the door. In fact, you knew that Riva was behind the door and you shot at her. That is the only thing that makes sense. You shot at her knowing that she's behind the door. He'd only been going out with her for three months. Three months and, and she was dead. She was destined for great things. You started to see her everywhere. Hi, my name's Riva. We are here today as a family. But it's only one thing missing, it's Riva. <laughs> this year was going to be huge for her, mm. and she knew it. From Pretoria, it's Judgment Day for Oscar Pistorius. With the judge deciding finally after a six month trial if he did murder his girlfriend Riva Steenkamp, he will finally hear his fate delivered by Judge Tokazile Masipa. Question is Did the accused foresee the possibility of the resultant death? The answer has to be no. Viewed in its totality, the evidence failed to establish that the accused had the requisite intention to kill the deceased, let alone with premeditation. Mr. Pistorius, please stand up. The unanimous decision of this court is the following. On count one, murder. The accused is found not guilty. Instead, he is found guilty of culpable homicide. The Paralympians' world began to unravel on Valentine's Day 2013. And we're getting breaking news coming in from South Africa. South African police are confirming a woman has been found dead at the home of the athlete, the Paralympic star, Oscar Pistorius. Oscar Pistorius is in police c uh, custody in his home in Pretoria after he allegedly shot and killed a woman. We can confirm that there was a shooting incident this morning at the home of the, the well-known um, Paralympic athlete Oscar Pistorius. The woman has been named as Riva Steenkamp. What sort of girl was she? The sweetest human being and an absolute angel on earth. She was a rising star. Uh, there was so much in the pipeline for her. She was just about to explode into the media. I woke up in the morning of Feb 14th and it was all over the news. I was shocked. I, I, didn't, I didn't believe it. My phone was going crazy. And the messages were, have you seen the news about Oscar? And I was so confused. I mean, I've just woken up and I'm like, what news? It was about quarter to eight in the morning and I got a phone call from one of her friends. My heart started beating a little bit because I knew something was wrong. And I answered and she just said, gee, are you sitting down? And then immediately my thought was, well, not my thought, my voice started screaming, where's Reva? Where's, where's Reva? Where is she? What happened to her? And she just said, calm down, are you, are you sitting down? And then she said, there's been an accident. In front of Reva Steenkamp's mother and other family and friends, Oscar Pistorius gave his account of what happened that night, in the witness box, but away from the camera lens. I thought that there was a burglar that was scaling entry into my home. The first thing that ran through my mind was that I needed to arm myself, that I needed to 
protect Reva and I that I needed to get my gun. And um, and then I heard a noise from inside the toilet. Um, what I perceived to be somebody coming out of the toilet. Before I knew it, I'd fired four shots at the door. I didn't want to believe that it could be Reva inside the toilet. I ran back to the bedroom where the cricket bat was. And then I then hit the door. Um, I think I hit the door three times, flung the door open, I threw it open. And I sat over Reva and I cried. And um, I don't know, I don't know how long. <coughs> I don't know how long I was there for. <laughs> she wasn't breathing. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost too hard to believe. You know, if we go back to that the tragic evening, you know, it's it's, it's almost it's almost surreal. It's too hard to believe at times. I have I have terrible nightmares, but about things that happened that night where I wake up and I smell, can smell uh, blood and I wake up to being terrified. Mr Pistorius would have been more likely to fight as his capacity to flight was compromised. Pistorius claimed it was an accident, saying it was pitch dark when he got up to bring in two fans from the balcony and close the curtains, and that he thought Reva was still in bed when he heard the noise. Before we start, Mr. Pistorius, I say you've got a concocted version, which you've tailored to fit the state's case, and you're tailoring your version as you're sitting there. Here's a guy that was an icon. You see him basically sitting in the dock, you know, up for these different charges, and it's, no, it's, it's, it's not the same Oscar. And I mean, Oscar, in his own particular way, was, was iconic. I mean, he's... Uh, I read somewhere that he's probably the best known South African after Mandela. Um, and it's always sad to see an, an icon for it. Since the incident has just been about Oscar, um, so there is an outcry from people who are wanting Reva to be remembered as Reva, and not just a model, not just a law graduate, but as a person. And I think that's what's being lost in the whole story. Reva Steenkamp's killing cut short a career that friends and colleagues said was very much on the rise. The 29-year-old was a law graduate, a successful cover girl, and was about to become a recognised face on TV. Hey guys, I'm Reva, and I'm begging you to not miss the first episode of Tropical Island of Treasure 5, shot in Jamaica this Saturday on SABC1. You literally are watching her and, you know, interested when she shows up in the paper and that. And bump into her once in a while and catch up and that, so it's really just a waste, you know, because at least Oscar, you know, achieved his potential, you know, she didn't, didn't get a chance to. She had a lot to give people and this was her year that she wanted to do it. She was, she was about to do big things and she was really, really excited about it. Hi, <laughs> I'm Oscar's date tonight. Um, he needed a date at the last minute, so it's like, Reva, just throw your stuff together and come and be my date. So. This was their first date, November the 4th, 2012. Pistorius took Reva to the South African Sports Awards. In little more than three months, she would be dead. What do you think of Oscar as a sexy boy? Like Oscar's a very, very sexy boy. But he doesn't do it in like an arrogant, obnoxious way. He does it in a very classy, understated. He always has a good, simple suit on. Yeah, he's a gentleman. <laughs> we went to the sports awards, and after the evening, we sat uh, and spoke till two, three in the morning. Pretty much the first six days that we knew each other, we saw each other every day. Oscar's a really humble guy, Reva was a really humble lady and always nice to me as well as Oscar was always good and nice to me and you know so so when they started dating I think it, it was it was kind of something that it was like recognized in the spotlight because it was a good match. I was happy if she was happy but I mean you know Oscar golden child of South Africa. I think it was like any other 
relationship. There was, there was nothing that flashed a warning sign. I didn't know him very well. Well, as well as she did. She was happy. She was very happy. The prosecution had its doubts. I just want to love and be loved, be happy and make someone so happy. Maybe we can't do that to each other, because right now, you aren't happy, and I'm certainly very unhappy and sad. This was the couple just 10 days before the shooting, cuddling and being playful. But prosecution lawyers said there were problems. In one WhatsApp message, the model said Pistorius scared her sometimes. She painted a picture of a selfish, jealous, and tantrum-prone boyfriend. Every five seconds I hear how you dated another chick. You really have dated a lot of people, yet you get upset if I mention one funny story with a long-term boyfriend. I do everything to make you happy and to not say anything to rock the boat with you, saying that it's all about you. Pistorius responded in court, but away from the cameras. I think she's talking about herself there, my lady. She says, I do everything to make you happy, talking about herself, what she does for me. Yeah, but it's for you. She would never, Riva wasn't the person to let anybody walk all over her. She was a strong person. Riva wasn't the kind of person to always complain about stuff, but she would never have, have been with anyone if she wasn't happy. She wouldn't have settled for anything. Our motto this year was to be happy and to never settle. Never settle. If she believed I treated her badly, I think that she, I know for a fact she wouldn't have been with me. I didn't treat her badly. This was a argument that we had that lasted one message, the next message you can read, and it's morning Aussie with a smiley face. Treat her badly, apologize, <laughs> smiley face. It's not a relationship over years, sir. It's been four months, two months serious. Their arguments were used to build up an image of what happened that night. The prosecution said there was a fight. Can you remember what you showed? Yes, I can. What, what did you show? I screamed, I said, get the f out of my house. Get the f out of my house. Why would it be traumatic what you shouted at the intruders? Isn't it exactly because that's what you shouted at Reva? Get the f out of my house. That's what you shouted at Reva. Isn't that why you got emotional now? But the defense said her Valentine's Day present was proof that nothing was wrong with their relationship. It was a photo frame that she'd got made that has four photos of her and I. It says on the front of the card, roses are red, violets are blue, and then on the inside she wrote, I think today is a good day to tell you that. And then it says, I love you. Reva was killed just hours before she was due to give a motivational speech to school children. She was talking about it on the Tuesday before to me and my father about abuse and rape. And it wasn't just something that she just said on Twitter. It was something she, she believed in and something she wanted to be heard about. I think we both had, uh, we both had things that kept us back in our relationship and in getting to know each other. Um, we both came out of difficult relationships before. Reva was going to talk about love, abuse, and some low points in her life. Newspapers printed excerpts of what she was reportedly going to say on the day she was killed. Her notes read, I lost a lot of self-worth, and it took some serious soul-searching to remind myself of my value in this world. I hope that you have the most amazing Valentine's Day and that you're spoilt with love and roses and chocolates. Go home and tell your parents, siblings, neighbors that they are appreciated. She was very close to her parents. She told me so many times how thankful she was for her parents and her, the way she was brought up because it made her the person she is. I'd like to apologize 
and say that there's not a moment and there hasn't been a moment um, since since this tragedy happened that I haven't thought about uh, your family. I wake up every morning and you're the first people I think of, the first people I pray for. It is said that Reva was using her earnings as a model to support her parents financially. It was a career she started whilst in her teens. She was actually a bit of a child star, you know, so she was discovered when she was about 15 for one of those uh, model search things in, in Port Elizabeth. She was 15, and a young 15. There was nothing sophisticated about her. She was sweet, down-to-earth, earthy. Just one of those girls who had the it factor, a little bit early Kate Moss. Personality, ability to get on with people, ability to project yourself in a picture very well, take direction while she had all of those things. Reva eventually moved to Johannesburg in search of her big break in modeling. She was mature, um, professional. So, um, you know, a lot of girls got the look, but they, they don't actually understand the industry. They don't know what's required, what the client wants. You know, she just got the, the whole big picture, you know. First time I met her, um, we always smile. We always were like, it's just funny how she smiles and just her smile makes you smile. Um, and she would always ask you, like, how are you, you know, how's things? She's just the most loving, most happy person and, and a good person, genuine person. Everybody fell in love with her. I always got the impression with her that she was going to use the modeling as a springboard to something else. And that something else was television. Before the 29-year-old's death, she was a contestant on a celebrity game show. I think everybody just played the game the best that they could. My personal, personal favorite was getting to swim with dolphins. OK, these things aren't as small and as cute as what they look like on TV and stuff. But what an amazing experience. Coming out of it, I made some really amazing friends, people that I would literally put my life on the line for, some amazing, amazing people. To go to the next phase, it would have taken some kind of something special, you know, maybe a relationship with Oscar was part of that. I know he really felt strong about her, and I know she felt strong about him. You know, I know that when she was away on that celebrity challenge, he was missing her a lot, so I do know that they definitely had a strong bond and a very good relationship. She really did get the way that I had to live my life to be healthy, how strict our diet and our way of living is. In May 2012, he, he wasn't as relaxed as he had been. He was living off energy bars, energy drinks, not having any solid food didn't seem as though he was very organized for a high-level sportsman. At that stage, he was obviously stressed, whether that was the stress of, of the London Games arriving, whether he felt nervous about that. He was in the, uh, the world limelight in a way that he'd never been. Reva met Pistorius just a few months after the pinnacle of his athletic career, the London Olympic and Paralympic Games. Fresh from a gold medal last night, it is Oscar Pistorius! As an athlete, it was great to have him as a team, but as a, as a manager, at first I thought it's going to be hectic. He attracted media all over the world, uh, and it was going to be a little bit difficult for me to, to, to handle that as, as, a, as a team manager, because remember, I, I have to treat everybody the same. Uh, I was not going to give Oscar a special treatment. The so-called Blade Runner made history as the first double-leg amputee to compete against able-bodied sportsmen in the 2012 Olympic Games. It was incredible because the London Olympics felt like it was almost the Oscar Olympics. After Usain Bolt, I don't think there was a bigger story than Oscar Pistorius. He was a, it was an, an amazing story and big for South Africa, very big. At the semi-final, when he bowed out, you know, he received, it was almost equal to a standing ovation. You know, from that 80,000 strong crowd. And he was not even an, uh, 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 you know, a British athlete. Sometimes when I look at the TV, they put celebrities or sportsmen like uh, Lionel Messi, uh, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, you know, he's, he's falling that statue uh, of what he's, he's done for, 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 for athletics especially sports in South Africa. 
In the Paralympics, he won two gold and one silver medal. There's been controversy at the Paralympics with the man known as the Blade Runner, Oscar Pistorius, beaten by a man he says may have an unfair advantage. But some critics called Pistorius a sore loser after his surprise defeat to Alan Oliveira in the 200 metres. The runner had publicly questioned the legality of the Brazilian's blades. I was really disappointed. I was disappointed in him um, because he's the face of athletics, he's the face of, of sport. For me, he undid all the good that he had done for South Africa. No disrespect to the Paralympic Games, but going up to the Olympic Games, the biggest sporting stage in the world, was he, was he prepared? Was he managed well enough? Were there people that were you know, coaching him along the way? Was he prepared for the life that was going to change for Oscar Pistorius? Even from a young age, Oscar Pistorius never let his disability stop him from achieving his goals. I have a congenital defect, it's missing fibula in the legs, so it's basically a bone that never grew. When I was 11 months old I had both my legs amputated, so I amputation above the um, ankle. And then um, when I was 13 months I got my first pair of walking legs. Right from the start, um, Oscar saw himself as just another boy. And I'm sure that may have been a drain on his emotions. He may have found it hard to, to deal with in the end. Pistorius's parents were advised to have his legs amputated to avoid future medical complications. And when his parents divorced, the runner lived with his mother, Sheila. My father wasn't around much, so my mother, she, she had a pistol. Um, she would often get scared at night, and she would phone, phone the police more than often than not. Uh, it was just her being scared. The children were reared to see their external environment as threatening. Instead of the mother being in a position, if there was a threat, to relieve her children's anxiety, she added to the anxiety. I first met Oscar Pistorius in Johannesburg in November 2011. He said, join me um, for lunch. We can go and eat um, rounds of mine. When I went there, I saw there was a gun by the side of his bed, and I think that was the, probably the 9 millimeter. I said to him, you know, why these guns? And um, Pistorius's response was, well, you don't know if the guards are going to be in on the robbery. So he obviously did have this fear. He didn't seem amazed that he had guns in his room. It was natural. You know, he'd grown up with them. He was treated like any other student at Pretoria Boys High School, even after winning a gold and bronze medal at the Athens Paralympics in 2004. I first got to know him as a 13-year-old when his mum brought him and Carl, his older brother, for an interview to get into the school um, as boarders. After the interview, I mean, she made it very clear that she was not bringing me a disabled boy at all. You know, what one saw straight away was incredible courage. God had a plan when he gave me these legs, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, I'm happy. I'm, I don't think I would have been doing athletics if I was able-bodied. Oscar is one of those kids that sort of just took to you straight away and you took to him. Uh, from the time that my boys were in Pretoria Boys High with him, he automatically became one of their big mates. He fit in with us, he just sort of jowled, he became our, like an adopted son to our family. I met him at a charity weekend. Here was this kid. His name had already appeared and people knew about him. You know, he hadn't really, you know, the lights weren't on yet and, you know, the, he hadn't reached the, the pinnacle. Or, you know, there was, there was still a career that was about to take place that everybody was keeping their eye on. And, yeah, he was a, just a, a very gracious kid, very, you know, just a youngster. Pistorius's mother died when he was 15. He was very bruised by that experience. I'm sure if being born without legs was one of the major factors in his mind, the other one was the early death of the mother he adored. I think that has had a big bearing, I'm sure, on, on his emotions as, as he's grown up. I've known Oscar since 2004. He's a lot more confident than what he was in 2004, and, and um, 
And obviously with, with, with fame, there comes a lot of responsibility. Pastores crashed a boat in 2009, which severely injured him. Empty alcohol bottles were found on board, but the Paralympian never faced charges. I was in, a, um, in an induced coma for several days, and then I woke up in hospital. People were joking about it and saying, you know, that I was drunk and this and this, but they didn't understand that I nearly lost my life. Were you drinking? No, I wasn't drinking. Either. There was no real proper information forthcoming because I think the management team wanted to cover it up to make sure that Oscar got away with it unscathed. For me, the biggest shock was all the aggressiveness. I saw it bubbling under with the different incidents. But, you know, all the guns and the cricket bat and the baseball bat, and that's not, it's not normal, I don't think, for any kid. The runner was only licensed to carry this 9mm Parabellum pistol. But Pistorius had several firearms on order, including shotguns and a semi-automatic rifle. The prosecution launched their cross-examination with exclusive Sky News footage. Oscar Pistorius, as you've never seen him before. And in these pictures uncovered by Sky News, the athlete shows his prowess at handling a gun. Get ready. Screams of delight, but listen to the voice of a man who sounds very much like Oscar Pistorius. It's a lot softer than brain, but it's like a zombie stopper. <laughs> what we can see there is the effect the ammunition had on a watermelon. It exploded. Am I right? That's correct, my lady. You know that the same happened to River's head. It exploded. I'm going to show you, Mr. Pistorius, it had the exact same effect, the bullet that went into her head. My lady, I was there that night. I... That's it. Oh. Have a look there, Mr. I know you don't want to because you don't want to take responsibility, but it's time that you look at it. Take responsibility for what you've done, Mr. Pistorius. My lady, I'll, I've taken responsibility by me waiting and not wanting to live my life, but waiting for my time on this stand to tell my story for the respect of Riva. And for myself, I've taken responsibility, but I will not look at a picture where I'm tormented by what I saw and felt that night. As I picked Reva up, my fingers touched her head. I remember, I don't have to look at a picture. I was there. It's the same thing as the watermelon. You had it now in practice. This is Reva arriving at Pistorius's home in Pretoria just hours before the shooting. Ten minutes later, CCTV shows the athlete in his white BMW at the estate entrance. That night, some neighbours thought they could hear a man crying out, which fits the defence's version of events. The cry that we, we heard those early hours of the morning, that was, the person was very desperate for help. So, also, we felt that probably is in danger. Was it loud? Very loud, my lady. It was very loud. Do you see the man's voice. I ask you if it was a low tone or a high tone. No, it was a very high pitch voice. But prosecution witnesses said they could hear a woman. It was blood curdling. It was something that leaves you cold. You just know that woman's life was really threatened. A doctor living nearby went to help after hearing what he thought were female screams and gunfire. He gave his evidence off camera and Pistorius was visibly shaken. I tried to assist her. So I tried to open the airway and to look for any signs of life. She had no pulse in her neck. She had no peripheral pulse. She had no breathing movements that she made. She was clenching down on Oscar's fingers as she was trying to open uh, her airway. Um, there wasn't any signs of life that I could see. Um, Oscar was crying all the time. He um, prayed to God to please let her live. She must not die. Um, he, will, he said at one stage while, while he was praying that he will dedicate his life and her life to God if she would just only live and, and not die that night. Prosecutor Harry Nell believed Pistorius was overcome by emotion because it was the athlete's intention to kill Reva. You shot four shots through the door. 
whilst knowing that she was standing behind the door. She locked herself into the toilet. You armed yourself for the sole purpose of shooting and killing her. As well as murder, Pistorius was also charged with the illegal possession of ammunition and illegally firing a gun in public. He denied all the charges. The 27-year-old athlete was at this restaurant with three friends, including boxer Kevin Lorena, when a gun went off. We sat together to help, to help me with my diet, you know, because um, he obviously knows a lot more than I do, and being the type of icon he is, um, you couldn't ask for better advice from a guy other than Oscar. Darren Fresco, who was also at the lunch, had a gun the athlete was interested in buying, and Pistorius asked to see it. I wanted to double check or make sure that the firearm was safe, meaning that it didn't have a round, it wasn't loaded. As I uh, checked the chamber, a round came out of the breech, and the next thing I knew, um, a round went off, it, the firearm discharged. I said to him, you know, what if somebody got hurt? Take your firearm back, and I gave it to him under the table. Darren then mentioned to the party that he's, he'll say that his firearm fell on the floor or that it got hooked on his pants. Lorena contradicted Oscar's evidence, saying Pistorius was told there was a bullet in the chamber. From what I remember correctly, Darren said, I'm one up, there's one loaded into the chamber. I do remember Oscar saying, please, to Darren, just, just say it was you. I, I, don't want, I don't want any tension around me, just say it was you. And then once that, that was said, the people from the restaurant came to the table and then that's when Darren said it was him. You know, it's not easy because obviously they subpoena you and you've got to go to court. And at the end of the day, you're not there to slate anyone. You're there to tell the truth. And that's why people don't realise they make this mistake about you taking a side. No one's taking a side yet. There's no sides. Like I said, two people have been affected. And like my, my thoughts go out to the Pistorius family and Oscar. This, this, this can only be too terrible. I stepped into that courtroom and it, it's a very cold place and it was a very daunting task to, to sit in that box and to answer questions. So, so, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. It's, it's not easy. It was sad to see him in the, in the witness box. Um, he had so much that he should have been able to do in his life. From the start, it was a process of shock, almost disbelief that this could happen to me. That shock was almost part of the very first few um, moments in court. You, you could see that shock and disbelief. He's taking day by day. Some days we think he's sort of surviving, but he's devastated. He's in bad shape. It's so obvious that, what do you do? You cannot undo it. Every morning you wake up, the nightmare wasn't a nightmare. Judge Dr. Zila Masipa finally handing down clearly and straightforwardly her verdicts. Not guilty of murder, guilty of culpable homicide, guilty of one firearms offence of firing a loaded weapon in a restaurant in Johannesburg, but not guilty of two other uh, firearms offences. Breaking news on the channel at this hour, Oscar Pistorius guilty of culpable homicide. Oscar Pistorius guilty of culpable homicide in the killing of his girlfriend. News alert now because that Blade Runner, Oscar Pistorius just convicted of culpable homicide. So our deep Grateful we are to, for Judge Masipa that he's found Oscar not guilty of murder. It's been the biggest trial in the history of our country. Not because of the profile of the matter, but because in recent history, this is the first trial that's ever been broadcasted to the extent that it has, not only on above the line media, but also social media. Because of that alone, it's been the trial of the century. It can't be easy, you know. This is a, it's, it's not just a trial, it's a trial that's broadcasted to many countries around the world. You know, there's crucial things in it, there's, there's things that have been exposed, evidence. I mean, it's, it's, it's not something, like I said, I'd wish on, on my worst enemy. The accused was a very poor witness. <laughs> While during evidence in chief, he seemed 
composed and logical with the result that his evidence flowed and made sense. While giving his version under cross-examination, he lost his composure. Pastores faced a barrage of questions from the prosecution. I think he came across terrible. In many instances, uh, right from the point of cross-examination, he started contradicting himself, he started changing his version, he gave evasive answers. So, in a single word, terrible. I believe, as many do, and definitely mainstream South African press, that the emotion was overemphasized. I thought in the witness box that Pistorius held his story together as well as could be expected, but that said, there were still a lot of holes in the story or a lot of things that he skated over or avoided in his answers. He did not come over as a reliable witness. At least he raised the possibility that he is altering his version on two or even three different occasions, and one will not expect that of an accused under such circumstances, remembering that they had a year in advance to prepare for this trial. Some of the expert witnesses for the defense also appeared ill-prepared. There was a lot of uh, contradictions and possible inconsistencies, especially in the so-called expert witnesses called by the defense. Not only that, uh, also when these defense witnesses, so-called experts, testified, in actual fact, they sometimes co uh, contradicted themselves. On the one hand, Judge Matsipa finds that Oscar Pistorius is an unreliable witness. She rejected his versions, all his defenses that was up there. And then she accepted his, his version that he did not foresee that he could kill Riva Stienkamp. And that is a point of contention. Obviously, we know he did it. He's never denied the fact that he did pull the trigger and he shot through the door. And due to that, this is what has taken the life of Riva. The young Reaver and Oscar Pistorius had big dreams and appeared to be on the cusp of realising them. Obviously, we all remember Reaver. She is the victim of this. And I think you'd have to be very hard not to see the sadness of the story of Oscar Pistorius. Here he is brought low by a moment of madness, really. Reva Steenkamp was cremated and her ashes were scattered in the sea at this beach in Port Elizabeth. Her mom's devastated, her dad's. She was very close to her parents. She told me so many times how thankful she was for her parents and her, the way she was brought up because it made her the person she is. And when we went to the, when we went to the funeral in PE, we met her family, you don't, you don't even know how good they are. Good people, her whole family. They're down to earth, they precious and you could see where it came from in Riva. There's a space missing inside all the people that she knew. They can't be filled again. We're going to keep all the positive things that we remember and know about my sister. We are here today as a family, but there's only one thing missing, it's Riva. <laughs> Oscar Pistorius sold his home in order to pay for his mounting legal bills. Barry and June Steenkamp now run the Barking Spider near Port Elizabeth. The pub gives them a much needed income. The couple had lived in relative anonymity, but their daughter's killing thrust them into the spotlight. The cameras were a constant reminder of the global interest in the court case. In one sense, that process helps you come to terms with the huge reality of the loss, which is in your face, and can't be more blatant than seeing these images that have been portrayed of her daughter in, those, in that situation and going through in fine detail over and over again what happened. There can be no denial of the tragedy of the loss of her daughter. The emotional turmoil of Reva's death and the subsequent trial has also been hard on her friends and colleagues. It's difficult to wake up in the morning and there's, there's that split second where you feel like everything's okay and it's just a nightmare and it hasn't really happened. And then you realise that it has happened and everything's going on. It's very difficult to just 
take it all in. It's like it's like going through it's like going through it every single day when you wake up and realizing that she's gone and she's not coming back. It's really difficult. We miss her every minute of every day. We miss her because she lived with us. We, we see her in everything that we do all day long. Whatever happens to Oscar, uh, Reva's gone and her parents have to live with that loss. If Oscar gets to live his life, he's a young man, even if he serves jail time, he's still young enough to carry on with his life, but Reva's gone and that's my sadness. She just didn't realise her potential. It was, it was too soon. It was, she was like on the threshold of something. I don't know what it was. I was kind of interested to see where she was going to go, you know. It's a shocking, shocking thing, eh? really. It's, it's, it's brought up so many issues on so many levels, so many issues for so many people. Um, I, th I think of the parents, I think of other friends and family members. Uh, oh, no, it's, it's just a terrible thing. The tragedy is that a family has lost a precious daughter, she's not coming back, and that's the real sad reality. Oscar's life, one way or another, will go on. A tragic event like, like this, there's, there's no big in this. We as a family remain deeply infected by, by the devastating tragedy event. And and it won't bring Riva back, but our hearts still go out for her family and friends. It's very difficult for people to understand that the hero that he was, the, the focus, the resilience, the um, positive characteristics that they admired and that he displayed were actually there and still do exist. They coexist with many other characteristics that have just come to the fore. You would have to reassess where am I going from here. Th this is a crossroads. The case was convicted of a very serious case. To cause the death of an innocent woman, even negligently, makes the imposition of a lengthy imprisonment probable. It's difficult in this country, anyone who goes to prison, you've got a problem. I'm just hoping that if that comes to that, that he can really handle it, because it's going to be difficult. I would imagine that the thought of that is so abhorrent to him that he doesn't want to face it head on until he really has to. After spending his life overcoming adversity on and off the track, the sporting icon's glittering career is tarnished forever. But some friends and colleagues have stood by him. He's still an icon. I think it's just about how he's going to bounce back from this. I believe he can overcome because he's that type of person. He's a good athlete and I hope he can get back to winning ways because he's a really good athlete and an inspiration to many young athletes out there, no matter what has happened. Deep in my heart, 